Hello and welcome to another video, this time Matt 2015 question 5. Let's try and bust out the last few which aren't on early uh, Oxford live streams uh, before you exam on Wednesday. Okay, so uh, this one, I mean, <laughs> are they having a laugh? Did they actually have a bet with how many brackets they could put on a single line uh, in the in the mat here? You know, the question writers. I, d I just don't know. I think there's like 32 individual brackets on that line. I mean, <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, they're having a laugh. But um, okay, these questions are often harder than they look. You know, they, they love writing these questions in the mat with just functions of add one or times two or something like that. Really simple, basic functions but then they just combine them in lots of ways and it becomes like a counting question or in as in the case of this one this feels almost like a programming question um, because you're doing functions of functions of functions and it's recursive it feels very kind of like computer sciencey anyway let's have a go at it um, so firstly we've got to show that this monstrosity is two what it's probably easiest if you see if you notice that we've got three elements that we're plugging in to s here x y and z and we're going to take y if this one's uh, less than or equal to zero and we're going to take z if the first one is greater than zero that's super important in this question it comes in throughout it now in order to work this out i think i probably would have actually worked out these three elements ind individually first so s of p of zero of m of zero of m of m of zero let's try and get the number of brackets right there yeah, OK. Um, so this is just like um, element A, if you like. Well, that is S of, well, P of 0 is 1. M of 0 is minus 1. And M of M of 0 is minus 1, minus 1. So that's going to be minus 2. And here, as the first element is 1, well, that means X is greater than 0. So we're going to take Z there. Yeah. And so for the next bit, I'm going to point out S of P of 0. So I'm now looking at the middle element here m of 0, well they're going to be exactly the same as before, that's kind of nice, and then we've got p of p of 0, well p it represents a function adding 1, and so this is instead going to be this time s of 1 minus 1 positive 2, and as you see as the first item is greater than 0, that means we take z, so we're going to get 2 here. And lastly for the last one, s of m of 0, P of 0, M of P of 0, that sounds like an undoing of itself, doesn't it? Because you're taking away, adding 1 and taking away 1. Well, this is going to be S of minus 1, 1, and then 0. And so what are we going to have here? Well, as the first one is less than or equal to 0 this time, we're going to take Y, and so this equals 1. And so what we've actually got here... Um, if we call this star, you know, and might be wise to label it, you know, so for star, just let's the examiner know what you're doing. Um, we've got S of minus 2, 2, 1. You have to do this carefully as well because it's show that it's 2. They told you the answer. Getting to the answer is unimportant. It's how you, sorry, the answer is unimportant because they told you it. It's getting to the answer which counts. Okay, this first one's negative and that means we take uh, Y and so it equals 2 as required. Yeah, try and make it clear to the examiner that you know what you're doing. You know, work out those three elements first. OK, so that was like kind of a warm up in this question. Part two, what is F of 5, 2? Well, this is actually pretty awkward because you might start off all happy with like F of 5, 2, where it's going to be equal to S of, OK, I'm going to take the second element and put it in there. I'm going to add one to the first element and put it in here and then Oh, it's self-referential. And that's when you get recursions and loops, when you've got that self-referentiality within the function. But what we're actually going to be doing, the P just represents ab1. And so this is actually F of 5, because we have the A in here. And then we take off 1 but B, so that's going to be 1. But then because we're doing P to it, we're going to be adding 1 there. Yeah. Now, I'd straight away think, well, hang on a second. As the first element is greater than 0, it's irrelevant what y is yeah which is a six we want the z and therefore we want f of five one plus one but we could repeat this whole process again with f of five one yeah and you kind of have to you've got no choice to it so it's going to be s of now if you remember you put b in here you add one to a here and so that's going to be one six now and then this is going to be f of five zero plus 1. 
for similar reasons to the line above. Well, that's the same as, as this is still greater than zero, we just take z, and so this is going to be the same as f of 5, 0, plus 1. And you might think, does this go on forever? No, the good news is it doesn't, because now we can rewrite this. Oh, plus 1. Sorry, I forgot the plus 1 here from this line, because that, all of that, is just f of 5, 1. Yeah, um, and so we've got plus 1 plus one now yeah and it's this plus one plus one it's this recursion which gives us the answer to the second bit in a second so you definitely want to have this nice and clear in your head now f of five zero is going to be s of now if you remember we put the b here we put the a plus one here and then we put f of five and then we've got now five minus one oh hang on a second yeah and so we're working out f of five zero we're doing, uh, yeah, yeah, good. I've got a plus one, plus one now. I'm just checking I haven't made any mistakes. Uh, this looks good. Yeah, S of zero, that goes in as my B. I've added one to that, and then I'm going to have, um, yeah, I'm going to have to put in F of five minus one. Can I work out F of five, zero? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hang on a second. I've made a mistake. Oh, no, 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 it, it happens here, isn't it? Because now you get, yeah, less than or equal to zero on your x good good because it's that's an equal to zero so if you like plus five minus one plus one good and let's put plus one plus one i'm just going to leave that as plus one plus one because i want to show you how it counts and now here because we've finally got this one down to zero we can now no longer take the last component uh, the z component if you like in our s we can take the y component yeah and so we're going to end up with because at y if x is less than or equal to zero where x is finally less than or equal to zero and so what we're going to have here is we're going to have six plus two which is eight yeah now look at what's happened there you know have a quick look at this what's happening each line well f of five two is dependent upon f of five one f of 5, 1 is dependent upon f of 5, 0. It's, it's like it builds, basically, it back up from 5, 0 all the way up to 5, 2. And so that's going to tell you how many times you need to add, basically, 1 from your initial starting value of a, except here we had a plus 1. So it's always going to be a plus 1 plus b times, because that 2 is going to determine how many times you need to add 1. And so what you're going to have for a simple formula for the value of a and b for all integers is just simply f of a b equals a plus b plus 1. It's essentially, it's a plus 1 plus b. It's a plus 1 because we had a plus 1 as our y component, and we're eventually going to take our y component, aren't we? Once this counter, if you like, in the position of x in s, once that counter gets down to 0, we're going to be taking a plus 1 plus all of the times we needed to add one in this which was basically like um we were reducing by one each time uh and so this is essentially going to happen b times and therefore we've got a plus one plus b for our f of a b now how am i going to explain that um i think i'll probably write it down like this um i'm going to attempt a, a sketch of a proof if you like let's see if this works okay f of a b is going to be equal to remember they said b is bigger than zero here and a can be any uh, integer but b is a positive integer well if b is a positive integer then when you do your s b p of a which is obviously let's just write that as a plus one and then i think the formula was f of a b minus one plus one well, because we're taking, because b is a positive integer, we're always going to be taking the z component here, aren't we? Just as we did before. So this equals f of a b minus 1 at 1, yeah? Now, whilst b, you know, whilst uh, b minus n is greater than 0, this will continue, yeah? Where n is standing for this number here, because I could just repeat the process again, yeah, which equals f of 
Uh, you know, well, let's, yeah, let's <laughs> let's just skip it. Well, no, no, let me put the S back in because it will be probably better for the argument. So that is equal to S of B minus 1. You see this is going down now. Uh, this will still be A plus 1. That's kind of frozen on A plus 1. And this will be F of A, B minus 2, add 1 plus one yeah and because whilst b minus n is greater than zero this will continue so it will be f of a b minus two because we're going to take this plus one oh but then we've got a plus one on the end plus one yeah and so i can just kind of go dot 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 here and say it will come down to the point where you get f of a yeah, let's say b minus k equals zero. Well, when you get to b minus k equals zero, you're doing f of b minus k. And if b minus k equals zero, then k equals b. <laughs> let's put it like that. I hope this is nice and clear. Plus one, dot, 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 plus one. Now, how many of those are they going to be? Well, there's going to be K of them, in other words, B of them. OK, and at that point, you get something different happening because that's going to equal S of, OK, you've got B minus K in here, sure, which is zero. You're going to have A plus one in here, and this is why you get the plus one plus B. And then you get whatever, really, in this third element, because it's unimportant, A b minus k add k add one sorry plus one plus one k times and so this equals because here all of a sudden you've suddenly you're not greater than zero looking back at our definition of s you're now less than or equal to zero so we've finally got a different outcome happening here and we take the y component which is a plus one plus one k times but k is b remember so just plus b um, as required yeah it's a sketch of a proof i hope they'll accept it uh, I really do. I believe it's uh, correct, this part of the question. I haven't actually checked it in the mark scheme. I probably should. I checked it with my old notes from doing this question. It's interesting, actually, because uh, I got a slightly different answer at the end. So I really should have probably checked the mark scheme before I did this. But I'll check after the video and I won't put the video up if it's uh, wrong. But um, yeah, cool. OK, so uh, I hope that makes sense. Uh, that's you know, if you can get that fine, this question, I think you're doing really well. I'm not sure I get part four right in uh, the time that you're given. I might get sort of, you know, if that feels very much like the kind of question. I can see what's going on, but I find it hard to explain my reasoning in these ones. Now, we want G of A to be similar to F, but this time B is going to be negative. Yeah, whereas B was positive before. It could be equal to zero, actually. And you want G of AB to equal the sum of A, a and B. In other words, you want it to equal A plus B this time, not A plus B plus 1. Yeah, so very similar kind of question, um, very similar kind of function to F. Now, my thinking was, well, when we've got our G of AB, and it kind of involved a little bit of clever guesswork, my thinking was, I want this first element to stay the same. Yeah, um, I'm going to have something very, very similar to it anyway. I was thinking, well, let's just keep it the same. Let's try this at the moment. I'm going to have that one as B. Yeah, so always we're just going to write B in there. And then uh, I'm going to have the middle one. Well, I'm going to switch everything around. I need this self-referentiality because remember as well, I when it's less than or equal to zero and B is going to be less than or equal to zero here, by definition in the question, B is less than or equal to zero, you want to select Y. So I want the counter effect going on with my Y component here. I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well. I find this question quite hard to explain if I'm honest. Um, so I'm going to have, now I just switched everything round, you know, whereas they are adding one here and taking one way there. I thought as it's negative, I'm going to need to do things the other way round. I'm going to have to take away and then refer to the function uh, g of a of p of b. 
And then the last one, I thought, well, I could have, I tried first with A. I'll be honest with you, I tried first with A and it didn't quite work, yeah? But this is this is the kind of thing you do in a question, you know, when you're figuring it out, isn't it? It doesn't always go right first time round. So I kind of switched these roles and switched this one round and reversed it just because I thought, well, I'm go I want to be counting up to zero this time rather than counting down to zero. Or if you like... Do you see how the reason why in this original function this is a p is because you want to take this as like uh, the zero one when it when when something else happens and then you're going to be adding one each time until you get to the value up here yeah um, until you get to your uh, b value essentially and then you're going to add it that many times so let's actually see this one in action yeah so I tried it with three minus one yeah and so I thought this is g of three minus one so I'm going to stick s this is going to be my B. This is going to be, now here's the sort of complicated bit. It's going to be G of 3, and then I'm adding 1 to minus 1, so I'm getting to 0. And then I'm doing M to it, so I'm taking away 1. And then I've got A in here, which is 3, yeah? But remember, if your first element is less than 0, if X is less than or equal to 0, and my one is less than or equal to zero, then the rule is that you take the middle component, which is why I'm doing, you know, which is why I switched around the roles from Z and Y here. So this is going to be the same as G of three, zero minus one. Yeah. Which means I wonder what G of three, zero is. Well, we can do S of, right, B goes in here. This is going to be G of three, one, take away one and this is simply going to be a again yeah and so that equals i can now write down ah oh, this is still less than or equal to zero so i just take the middle term so that's g of three one minus one oh but then another minus one on the end and this is what's building that up and therefore this gives me g of um i now basically repeat the whole process again and I think what is G of 3, 1? Well, that is S of, right, stick B in here. Stick uh, this as G of 3, 2, minus 1. And stick Z as A, which is 3. And then we've got minus 1, minus 1. Well, look at this. This actually finally means that we can take the Z component because we've finally got the X component as greater than 0. Yeah. So we can now take the Z component, which is 3, minus one minus one so it's going to be three there and then we take away one take away one and i realized at this point ah that's not what three plus minus one is though is it that's like three plus one minus one so i realized i needed to add one to this and so rather than using a here in my final answer i used p of a in other words a plus one because if this was four then you get four minus one minus one which is two and that's what that equals you know so it's kind of like a bit of blagging like um but i, ne I still need to explain it because if you look at the question it's like uh you know find find a similar function define in a similar way and explain briefly why your function gives the correct value for all such values of a and b so the explanation bit is going to be the tough bit so my function you know like oopsie if you like yeah let's have instead use so my g of a b is going to be equal to i liked the s of b that worked nicely i even like the m of g of a b of uh, a p of b sorry that was working nicely but the last one rather than using a i'm going to use a plus one which i could of course just call p of a because p represents the function where you add one and then i thought that's kind of got a nice symmetry with what I had before for my F, because if you look at it, the first term's the same. These have switched, but I'm now using B in there, and I'm now using P and M switched roles in here for my middle one. Um, and I believe that's always going to work. And here's going to be my sketch of a proof. Why does it work? Well, G of A, B, whilst B is less than or equal to zero, yeah, I think they say B is a uh, less than or equal to zero here. Yeah, B is less than or equal to zero. Um, this is going to be definitely equal to S of B, M, G, A, P of B. Just write it out again. P of A. 
but that of course is the same as when b is negative or equal to zero you just take the middle term so that's m oh and let's not write down m because m just means take away one i should really put brackets in there but there's so many brackets in this question it starts doing your head in a p of b oh and let's call it a plus one that uh, b plus one so we're incrementing b each time up one and then we're taking away one from that um, okay so that begs the question what is g of a b plus one well assume yeah b plus n is still less than or equal to zero and we're going to be doing the same thing again s of b plus one um, m of g of a of p of b oh but let's put that oh yeah then let's call that let's make that slightly clearer clearer because it's going to be g of a b plus one Oh, and this is actually going to be b plus 2 actually isn't it did i make that clear yeah b minus 2 there we go i've got that because this is going to be b plus 1 plus 1 which is b plus 2 and then i'm taking away 1 and then i've got uh, p of a so that's uh, going to be a plus 1 and that just pretty much stays fixed throughout take away 1 but that is of course the middle term whilst this is still negative so g of a b plus 2 minus 1 minus 1 yeah and then you know let is that how i expressed it last time i'm just trying to mirror the proof over here say yeah let's just say b minus k or say b plus k now this time i don't want it to be zero because it's actually one which is the crucial value where everything changes so i'm just going to put dot 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 here but i'm going to say that b plus k is equal to one yeah in other words b is equal to one minus k and then i'm going to have okay so let's figure let's figure out where we've got to now we're now going to be at g a b plus k And now, how many minus ones am I going to have here? This is a whole sort of trick of my sketch of a proof. How many minus ones am I going to have there? Well, I'm going to have, if you think about it, I think I'm going to have, let's have a look up here, like our example is instructive. Um, if, you yeah, know, I'm changing that. I'm going to have basically B lots, I think there, aren't I? Let's just check. Um, when we were minus one, and we we're going up to two, um, so our B was minus one. Um, oh yeah that's a point and b is going to be negative as well so i think i'm going to have well it says it here one minus k uh let's check it works up here so if b plus k b with minus one here so here k would be two and so you got one minus oh yeah hang on a second that doesn't make sense uh i'm just struggling with the counting here <laughs> let's have a look here i've got one and i've got another one i only ended up with two though didn't i and that's because i'm going from minus one yeah essentially it's going to be one minus minus yeah what one minus b yeah which is what k equals it's going to be k of them yeah and that's because k equals one minus b k times okay and that that seems obvious here look at this b plus two two times b plus one it happens once <laughs> yeah b plus k it happens k times of course it's obvious okay so that equals we're very close now <laughs> you're probably getting fed up b plus k um and here's the crucial bit where it changes this will be a b plus k plus one minus one it doesn't really matter what that is because now we're finally at b plus k equals one so we're now taking the last one minus one minus one k times but that equals a plus one and then minus k yeah but k of course is one minus b and so that's a plus one minus one minus b and that equals a plus b as required Whew. i did not like doing that <laughs> that felt quite hard can i point out as well i don't think this answer is unique um i'm going to check the mark scheme in a second but when i looked at my notes for how i did this last time this is what i came up with for g of a b uh, where is it um i had s p of b it's very similar 
I had exactly the same middle term. And then for the last term, I had A. And I seem to believe that that will work as well. Um, I'll check it in a second. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was useful. Best of luck in the map.